Hey, did you know I have a shop? You can get cute things like stickers, enamel pins, washi tape, and iron-on patches all designed by me. That's right, CaseyGolden.com. <laughs> Check it out. It has officially been six months since I tested these jelly gouache paints and I have the same question a lot of you have. How do these paints last over time? I have not opened this thing of paints in the last six months. I haven't moistened them, I haven't sprayed them, I haven't done anything, I haven't even looked in here. So I'm very curious to see what we're going to find, to be honest. I'm a little afraid. Are they dried up? Are they moldy? Are there bugs inside of here? Let's find out and reveal what's inside. Oh, okay, that's... That was disgustingly gooey. There's definitely a weird, like, sticky substance. Oh, okay. Well, that's something. Now I have to say this piece of paper, this piece of paper feels like wet. Um, I think I did spray them before I stored them, so. Ew, oh my gosh, why? I d oh. I don't like how everything's like slimy. So overall, they seem pretty dried out. Um, if you look at this row, very dried out. And of course, if you look at this white in particular, my goodness, it looks like an overcooked cheesecake. Other than that, we do have a sheen of some strange sticky oils on top of them, especially this green here has some gooeyness, but because they are gouache, these should be able to reactivate really easily. So I say we go ahead and give them a little try and just see if they're, you know, you good bro? I'm partially scared, but also very curious what... Oh, okay, so I, oh, I'm actually really surprised that this is still very much wet right here. Huh, I, I could have sworn, like, I, I just, hmm. So this color does seem to be perfectly fine. I'm very surprised by that. So dark. Now, if I were to add some water, oh goodness, to this white, can I still use it? I mean, it seems like, it seems like you can still get the color out of these dried ones. I'm really surprised. Sorry if my swatching seems really random. I'm just kind of jumping around and trying ones that seem interesting. <laughs> just making sure they're good and it seems like, it seems like they're fine. A little sticky, but overall it seems like they're fine. It's so interesting you like break through the skin and it's just so moist. But yeah, it looks like the gouache are perfectly fine. I say we do some doodles and put them to the full test. Like I mentioned, going into this video, I was honestly not sure if this was going to be a one minute video or a 10 minute video. If the paints were completely shriveled up, turned into dust and disgusting, could I even paint with them? But surprisingly, they are completely juicy and moist. And aside from a couple that were very much dried, they were almost as if they had never been touched before. They were just very wet, very wet paint. Of course, the more I think about this, the more I think, what was I expecting? Also, being gouache, these paints are definitely able to be reactivated with water. They are meant to be reactivated, so even if they were completely dried, I mean, worst case scenario, I throw a bunch of water on them and they work again. So I'm not really sure why I hyped myself up to think that these paints were going to be completely unusable, but I did at least expect all of them to be completely dried up like that white pan was just completely dried, cracked, and needed to be reactivated, but I was really happy that they weren't. I mean, gouache are able to be reactivated with water, but it is kind of a pain to have to work the water into the paint to get a nice thick paint to work with. So I'm happy that most of them weren't dried. Most of them were very 
thick and juicy, ready to go. It was almost as if I had never opened these before. They worked just as well as I used them in the past. And it's really interesting to do a sort of follow-up review on these paints. I don't think there's any art supply that I've been even interested in in doing a follow-up review because something like this, a lot of people, like I mentioned, asked me to do a follow-up because they were really curious as to how these paints would last. And I also was curious how these paints would last. And look at them. They are doing very well. And especially if these are paints that you think that you would use often. Unlike me, I keep trying to get myself to try gouache. I want to practice with gouache more, but to be honest, I've been using a lot of acrylic gouache lately. I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe gouache paints aren't for me. They're just so thick. <laughs> and then if you add water to thin them out, they just become very transparent. Whereas with acrylic or acrylic gouache, which is what I've been using, if you add a little bit of water, they become become very thin and easier to use, but they don't get as transparent as quickly as gouache. I do really miss the reactivatability. <laughs> what? Reactivatability. That is not a word. Acrylic dries and you can't reactivate it, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I do very much enjoy working with acrylic or acrylic gouache much more than regular gouache. My original point being, if you do want to use gouache quite often, if you're going to use this set weekly or daily, I would highly recommend, I guess, if you're starting off to try these out. I am definitely not a gouache expert. I don't know much about gouache. I've only ever tried the Windsor & Newton designer gouache, so I'm not that super familiar with gouache. How many times have I said gouache? But I think overall, especially for the price, I've had a pretty good experience with these paints, especially like I said, if I can ignore them for six months and they will be completely usable, um, yeah. Seems like a pretty good product. I'm pleasantly surprised. These paints even survived moving and I cannot guarantee that these paints were kept upright the whole time. So I think they did pretty good for being stored away for six months, surviving a move, being put in a box, being thrown around probably. For something wet and juicy like this, especially not in super airtight containers, would recommend yes. So if you are wondering what I am painting today, if you watched my last video and if you've been watching my Twitch live streams lately, I am still obsessed with worms. And you know what? I found it really interesting. I went back to my original jelly gouache video just to see what I did, what I tested. And I was really shocked to find out that I drew these little wormy creatures. I mean, it's not that I've never drawn worms before. I've definitely drawn worms before. I've always liked these little wormies sticking out of holes. It's just recently they've really become an obsession. I've really enjoyed drawing them. It was just really silly to see a video of the same subject in the past past had worm drawings. So I'm going to continue my worm obsession, though I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit. Usually I just fill a page with worms with a grass color in the background and just keep it simple and fun, play around with shapes and color. But I thought I would sort of incorporate these worm drawings into a little bit more of a another sort of normal illustration. At first I was thinking about dead bodies and like worms coming out of carcasses and then I thought, you know what, let's just dial it back, Casey. I don't I don't think they're ready for that sort of creepiness. So instead I drew a stone person or is it just a stone that is in the shape of a person by coincidence? I don't know. But we have a stone person laying down in the grass. There's grass covering other bits. Well, originally, I guess this is sort of like moss. It's moss on a stone. Now, how the worms are coming out of stone, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I still wanted to combine the idea of worms coming out of a carcass, but also turned it into stone so that it was less graphic. And so we ended up with these worms that apparently can chew through stone. Either way, I approached this illustration very similarly to how I've been approaching my worm illustrations when I work with acrylic gouache. I used the gouache very much in its thick, opaque state. In the previous video, I think I watered it down quite a bit and used it very similarly to watercolor. This time we went opaque, we went thick, and I quite enjoyed using them. Even though, like I said, gouache still isn't for me. I did miss using my acrylic gouache. I do like the outcome of this illustration. I think it's really fun and I might be trying to incorporate worms into other types of illustrations in the future. Who knows? But I do really like the results. I think this turned out really fun. Oh. <laughs> Her 
face. Originally, it was supposed to look like a mouth and a nose. And I thought, okay, let's actually just give her nostrils instead of an actual nose. But it kind of looks like a mouth and two very silly eyeballs, which I am super okay with. Y'all know I love my goofy faces. I'm all about it. This piece of artwork was kind of looking a little too serious anyway. It's time to, time to make it look a little silly. Oh right, I forgot. After I peeled away the tape, I actually thought it would be really interesting if the worms in the top left corner didn't actually get, I guess, cut away by the taped edge. So I went ahead and had those worms break outside to the edge of the paper. And I really like the way it looked. This piece is overall fun. And yeah, that's it. That is our stone person covered in moss and worms using six month old jelly gouache, which to my surprise works very well. so much to what caseygolden.com for sponsoring this video no i'm just joking thank you guys so much for checking out my website i appreciate the support speaking of support have you seen my patrons aren't they great thank you guys all so so much for the support if you want early access to my videos secret sketches live streams and more check out the link to my patreon in the description you guys are the best thank you so much i'll see you in the next one stay golden bye